it doesn't matter where you live anywhere in this world you got to be familiar with bees I remember as a kid my grandfather had a beehive back in Hungary just one beehive it was so we could have honey whenever we wanted because you didn't go to the store in those days I mean I'm talking about back in the 50s you didn't just go to a store in Hungary and buy a jar of honey you could go to a beekeeper or you could have a hive of your own and many people kept a hive just like they would keep a chicken or would have gardens around their homes so that they had fresh healthy food to eat and as such we learned about the importance of everything and how it's all connected together much of that world has vanished as people have moved into cities depended on stores depended on mega farms for their food but one of the things that hasn't changed and cannot change is that we depend on pollinators we depend on pollinators around the world and the pollinators that have been in a decline now for more than a decade are not declining anymore they're crashing their population, their numbers around the world are crashing. They are vanishing. And even government reports have said that this could lead to conflicts. It could lead to wars. Imagine that something like three quarters of the food that we consume comes from pollinators. Forget about this genetically modified stuff like just now, you know, they've been showing on the news this fake beef, you know, created in a laboratory genetically modified organisms we depend on food that depends on pollinators it doesn't matter if it's the fruits that you eat the cereals in your breakfast or even the meat whether it's poultry pork beef whatever we depend on pollinators. The pollinators up in the mountainside that are pollinating the grasses. Cindy and I have dedicated a lot of time this spring filming the beautiful wildflowers all around us and that to me was a healthy sign that there's still pollinators in the mountains of British Columbia in the Okanagan up in the mountains because if you come down into the valleys where there's a lot of agriculture we're seeing a lot less pollinators a lot less birds a lot less insects of all different kinds but this is a global phenomenon what you see around the legs of some of these little bees those little white things it's pollen A lot of us are old timers. We remember a different time. And our world has changed so much. I mean, today, more than half the world's population lives in cities. They don't get their food from going out to a garden. They don't get their fruit from stepping out in their backyard and picking a peach or a orange or whatever. They go to grocery stores to buy it. Farms are not small, two or three acres. They're thousands of acres. They're industries. And as such, they use a lot of products in the production of food because it's production. It's industrialized production. It's not just farming. Whether it's herbicides that they don't have to go out and weed the garden or pesticides because, you know, I mean, if you have a worm in a one fruit or a a vegetable well then you know you're gonna have a gazillion of them very soon so the whole things have to be sprayed and there's so many different pests that you keep spraying all these different poisons all over the land and then we wonder where did all the bees go where did all the pollinators go I mean you know you got these hundreds of thousands of acres that are being sprayed continually by pesticides and herbicides and the pollinators are disappearing Like I said, the government reports have said that there could be wars in the future over the loss of pollinators, food, food shortages. We could be facing 
the death of hundreds of millions of people due to starvation because already starvation is a big uh, event far bigger than the terrorism that we hear about so much on the news Many beekeepers today, when they open up their hives in the springtime, they just find dead bees. There's nothing. No more life. And these bees were on their way down to uh, Vancouver, Lower Mainland, to pollinate the blueberry fields. but many areas, I mean, you can go into the internet, do a Google about bee decline, and the stories are current, July 2013. There's all over, all over so many things, and there are governments being very proactive, taking points, so think about this. Between the pesticides, herbicides, the genetically modified foods, our food supply is facing terrorism. I mean, terror attack. There's an attack on our food supply. How are you going to respond to this? It doesn't matter how old you are because, you know, if you're older, you got to think about your kids and grandkids. It is impacting everyone. Very tragic consequences and we don't hear enough about it in mainstream media. It's easier to sensationalize things like Yemen, Afghanistan, Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda, which even Obama not long ago said was on its heels, it's disappearing, it's, you know, you don't worry about it, but all of a sudden, now that the NSA has been shown to be spying on people all over the world, checking their internet and emails and everything, suddenly they got chatter. They got chatter that, you know, we should all be worried about. That's a whole different video that's going to be coming up, but for now, we are facing a catastrophe and it's happening it's growing and it's not getting the attention and one of the other factors in this is how corporations use lobbyists at all levels of the government whether it's in Ottawa whether it's in Washington DC the lobbyists come in and they're coming with suitcase fulls of cash they're not it's not bribes but when they show up to these politicians' doors, the politicians have spent three out of five days campaigning for money so they can run again. When the money is present, they will sign whatever the corporations and the lobbyists want. And this is a major threat that we're facing. And what do you have against Monsanto? I mean, they are dedicated to creating seeds so that everyone can have cheap, affordable food. I wouldn't call it food at all, personally. They're the largest biotech company that um, manufactures uh, genetically modified seed. This seed is not natural. It's been shown to have a lot of health repercussions. Not only does Monsanto um, own the and patent their own gen genetically modified seeds. They have over 11,000 patents. They own 90% of the world's seed supply with genetic, genetically modified seeds. These seeds, um, a lot of them are terminator seeds, and with owning this, uh, what they do is they, um, the farmers aren't allowed to save their seeds. And this is, this is just wrong. We need to be able to save our seeds, just like uh, we did years ago, and this infringes on our rights. It's not only the seeds, it's the poison. It's the poison, the, yeah. Monsanto is the company that created Agent Orange. Have you seen the effects of Agent Orange on the population in Vietnam over yeah. the over the last 20, 30, 40, 50 years? Those kids are deformed because of that crap. They are the leading company for manufacturing poison. And they're in our food. Definitely. What the hell? What the hell is right? They uh, manufacture uh, DDT, uh, dioxin, aspartame. I've uh, suffered from aspartame. The effects of Monsanto's aspartame. I used to have grand mal seizures. So they're a chemical company as well. And we have about 11 billion pounds of chemicals dumped into our onto our earth um, globally, and about 1 billion just within North America. Um, Mississippi. River has a dead zone, 6,000 square yeah, miles. Yeah, light it up, brother. And this is due to toxic agriculture, uh, toxic agrochemicals, 
uh, flowing into this river, it's dead, nothing's alive. Okay, um, and these genetically modified seeds, uh, basically, they're, they're not safe, the studies are coming out, the, um, they're, they're seeds. The pollinators are dying. Yes, that's true, they think uh, the pesticides that these um, companies are manufacturing, Monsanto and DuPont being one of them, uh, is causing the bee collapse. Definitely. There are so many things at play right now, from extreme weather to pesticides, herbicides, uh, whether if you're drinking milk at home or having it with your cereal, chances are it has some kind of growth hormone, antibiotic into it. Uh, the same thing with beef that you eat. Vegetables are sprayed. Some of them are going through radiation. Uh, we got GMO created beef now. Uh, GMO created uh, salmon. Salmon. I mean, think of this. You know, they got salmon that are growing to three, four times the size of ordinary salmon, like you know, little bluefin tuna. And uh, everything has uh, growth hormones, antibiotics, all forms of chemicals. Food is radiated so that it can have a longer shelf life. A lot of these things, we don't know the long-term effects. And we are, as a generation, and the next generation being used as guinea pigs. No, no one will tell me. I think it's GMO. Free. Governments help them funding their research.